In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a basic overview of how to edit your photos using Adobe Photoshop. Keep in mind, this is not a comprehensive list um, of editing steps, but it is a good place to start, and it is pretty thorough. Basically, I'm going to be showing you how to perform these steps, these editing steps, as, uh, as non-destructive edits. A non-destructive workflow is preferable. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is duplicate your photo. Anytime you bring something into Photoshop, you want to duplicate your photo. You never want to be editing your original photo. So I'm going to go up to File, Save As. And I brought this photo in as a JPEG. I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document, or PSD. That way I'm not overwriting the original JPEG. Um, when I save it as a PSD, it will retain all of the layers and all the layer masks for future edits if I do need to go back and make any changes. So the next step is to crop and straighten your image if necessary. Cropping serves two purposes. Uh, the first purpose is to improve the impact of your photo and eliminate any unnecessary or distracting background elements. Um, the other reason you might want to crop is to improve the composition or the framing of your photo. So with this photo, um, you know, I could crop it. I don't necessarily think I need to uh, unless I wanted to focus on some cluster of houses over here. Kind of depends on what you're going for. I'm going to click on my crop tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is deselect this delete cropped pixels. Um, if I deselect that, I can always come back and change my crop later. So let's just say that I did want to focus on this cluster of homes over here. I could do something like that. And I could either hit my return key, or I could come up here and click this plus button. OK, so now I've cropped my photo. If I did need to come back and adjust it, I could easily do that. If I needed to come back and rotate it or straighten it, I could do that as well. OK, the next step is to adjust the exposure and tones of my image. So I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer. Now I have a new layer. And this is my, my levels histogram tool. A histogram, which is this thing right here, this histogram is just a visual representation of all the different pixels in my image. So the darkest pixels are going to be over here on the left. Um, these are called your shadows. In the middle here, these would be your, your midtones or your grays. And then over here on the far right, um, <clears throat> these would be your um, highlights or your white pixels. Um, so if you look here, you can tell just by looking at this histogram that there, there really is no, there are no pure black pixels in this photo. Otherwise, they'd be showing up here. Um, looks like there's a, f a couple pure white pixels. You can see them all the way over there. Um, so one of the first things I want to do is I want to adjust this slider. I want to move this slider over to the right. And you'll notice when I do that, um, I'm able to adjust the dynamic range of my photo. Uh, basically. What I want to do is I want to slide this over kind of to the base of this curve. Um, and that's a good rule of thumb, is you want your, your black slider and your white slider to, um, to kind of be at the base or, or sort of the beginning of, of this curve. You don't want to go past the curve. If you go past that curve too much, you start clipping pixels. Um, basically, that means you're starting to lose detail. So as a good rule of thumb, keep that black pixel, or I'm sorry, keep that black slider at the base over here on the left and the white slider at the base over here on the right. Step four, we are going to correct um, white balance or color cast issues. When you correct white balance, you adjust the photo so that the colors look as accurate as possible. If your photo looks unnaturally orange or blue or yellow, you might have a white balance issue with your photo. Uh, I don't think that we have much of a white balance issue here. I think all the colors look good. 
One way to tell is by looking at the white pixels. Um, if the whites in your image are supposed to look white, like these houses, um, that's a good sign. If these houses all looked you know, kind of orange or, or blue, that might suggest that you had a problem with your white balance. But I think we're, we're in good shape here. However, I will show you a basic way to adjust white balance if necessary. I'm going to go back to my original layer here. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to go up here to Filter, and I'm going to select the Camera Raw Filter. So the Camera Raw Filter has a white balance tool up here. I'm going to click on that, and basically once you've clicked on that, you can click on an area that you want to be neutral colored. So basically I'm looking for like a white or a gray area in my photo. Um, I'm going to click here, and if you don't like the results you're getting, you can try clicking on a different white or gray area. You can see this gave me kind of an unnatural like green color cast, so I don't like that. I'm going to click over there. Um, I mean, that's better. You, know, you can keep clicking and kind of playing around with it. Again, I don't think that this necessarily needs to be adjusted. Um, that's one way to adjust white balance. Another way would be uh, you can select auto white balance, and Photoshop will kind of uh, adjust the white balance in a way that it thinks would work best. Or you can use these sliders, um, these temperature and tint sliders right here. So if I felt like this image was too like blue and green, if I felt like it was um, not warm enough, I could, I could warm it up by bringing these sliders over to the right. So we'll do that. Again, you know, you can make really subtle changes here if you wanted. I don't think it necessarily needs it, but we'll do it anyway. Go ahead and hit OK. And if you wanted to see the before and after, you can click down here on this camera raw filter. That was before. This is after. So very small, subtle changes. Step five. Let's go to the next step here. Everything we've done so far, um, we've been making adjustments to the entire image. The next step would be to apply what we call local adjustments. Uh, these are edits that you make to only small areas of your photo. So examples of that might be if I wanted to lighten an area or darken an area of my photo. Dodging is lightening specific areas of your photo. Burning would be darkening specific areas. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go here to adjustments and select curves. And this curves adjustment layer allows me to lighten or darken my entire image or parts of my image. So this will be lightening, this will be darkening. So I'm going to do dodging first, which is lightening. So I'm going to lighten. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my layer mask right here. This is my layer mask. Uh, I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to make it black. So I'm going to do a Command I to make it black, or, or hide it. Basically, I just hid that adjustment layer. The other way you can invert it is go up here to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. Again, you have to be clicked on your adjustment layer. So I'm going to make that black. When we want to reveal content on a layer mask, um, we use the white color over here. If we want to conceal, we use black. So right now, we have concealed this whole layer because it's black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have white selected here as my foreground color, and I'm going to go get my brush. I'm going to paint the parts of my, my photo that I want to be lighter. You can always adjust the size and hardness of your brush depending on the effect that you're going for. So you've got size and hardness up here. Um, you've got opacity as well. You can also adjust the size of your brush with your brackets. If you, if you look down at your keyboard and if you look at your P key, your brackets are just to the right. You can use those left and right brackets to make your brush smaller or larger. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to dodge this area down here. I'm going to dodge the water. I'm going to lighten up the water a little bit. So I'm just going to click, and 
and draw down here to lighten this up a little bit. If I hold down Option and click, it'll show you what that layer mask looks like, the area that I've, that I've dodged. I could lighten it a little more or darken it. So one trick to kind of blend in this dodging that I just did is, is go up here to Image and Apply Image. And I'm just going to use my default settings here. So merged layers, RGB color, multiply for my blending, opacity at 100. Make sure invert is, is not selected. Make sure it's deselected. And I'm going to hit OK. And that just kind of helps blend it in a little bit. So this was before. This is after. Uh, again, you know, if I wanted to lighten this more, I can always adjust my curves here. OK, so now it's time for our burning. So I'm going to create another curves adjustment layer um, for the burning. So the burning, again, is, is we are going in and, and darkening parts of our image. And I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And then I'm going to invert this layer. I'm going to go to Image Adjustments and Invert. Make it black. Make sure my foreground painting color is white. Uh, select my brush. And I'm going to darken just a little bit of the forest up here, darken a little bit of these trees. And again, to blend it, I'm going to go up here to Image and Apply Image. Use your default settings, hit OK. This was before, this was after. So that's really subtle. I could bring it out a little bit more if I wanted to. The idea with dodging and burning is usually you want these, these adjustments to be pretty subtle. It doesn't, you don't want it to look like you're painting something onto the photo. OK, next step is to sharpen our photo using the Unsharp Mask Filter. So sharpening works by increasing the contrast at the edges of your image. Uh, however, there are limits to the amount of sharpening you can apply. Basically, if, if you take a photo that's out of focus, you're not going to be able to, to make it seem in focus with the sharpening. Sharpening just has really subtle, subtle adjustments. So when we're ready to sharpen, we're going to zoom in um, to around 100%. I'm going to get my zoom tool. I'm going to zoom in pretty close. So notice up here I'm at 104% zoom. I want to zoom in so I can see some of the details. Um, and then I'm going to click back on my original layer, my background layer, and go up to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Usually you want your amount to be between 50 and 70 percent, so let's leave it at 60. And the radius, keep it around 1, keep the threshold at 0. You can use your preview button to turn it on and off. So I'm going to hit OK. The last thing we're going to do is save. Um, when you're done editing your photo, check to make sure you're saving your, your photo as a, as a PSD. Um, so save as, make sure it's a, a Photoshop document, PSD. So it's already a Photoshop document. So I'm going to hit Save, hit OK. Uh, and then you can also go back to File, Save As to output your photo in some other format. So maybe you want to export it or output it as a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF file. You, you can select any of those to output. And that's it. You're all done.